Hey guys, Mixed Media Girl here, and today we're going to do a mixed media painting. I have not been doing a lot of these on video because generally mixed media paintings take me a while and I don't have like a specific thought before I start, you know, and I kind of change my mind a lot as I go, which makes me hesitant to make like a tutorial video or something. It's, it's easy to do a time lapse, but... I don't want to sit here for an hour changing my mind instead of teaching you guys anything, but we're going to go for it. So first of all, I'm using a bunch of products from Little Birdie that I got that are mixed media products, I'll tell you. Um, so I obviously have some other stuff as well because mixed media is actually my primary art, although you guys see all the fluid art. So this is a canvas board. It's eight by eight from Little Birdie. I have uh, this twine cord and this is 3D Pearl Drops. Haven't tried that, so that's exciting. I've got some ink sprays. So I kind of picked out a, a bit of a color scheme. Um, I've got tinted metallic. This is Caribbean teal and then um, a sparkle paint. That's exciting, right? And then I've got um, their gesso and mixed media paste, which is a mixture between gesso and modeling paste. So to give some texture. Then I have some other products that I'll be using, which I'll explain as I go. But let's just go ahead and get started and we're just gonna go for it. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and start with the background. So for those of you who don't know what mixed media is, it's a very broad general art term, which basically covers just any painting using more than one uh, media. So you could be using pencils and watercolor, you could be using all kinds of stuff. So I'm going to start, like I said, with the background. This is Liquitex Gloss Medium and Varnish. And one of the things I've learned about mixed media is that it really helps to just layer, 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 layer. And a lot of times people will go, oh, but you totally covered up the background. Well, no, it's all just layering. So yes, a lot of this burlap will be covered up but it will also give it a, a texture and some of it will be showing. I'm using some old dictionary pages. Um, I don't know about you, but I am an avid dictionary user. So I've got tons of dictionaries that I've used over the years. And at this point, I have a couple that I can recycle <laughs> because I don't know anyone that really needs you know, like 30 dictionaries, but that's probably about how many I have. All right, so um, I often pick out certain words and stuff in the dictionary. I did not do that this time. This time I'm kind of just going a bit random with it. I also have some scrapbook paper that I think that I will use. I thought this would be kind of cool, like maps. And you can, of course, cut pieces. I prefer to randomly rip them off so that you have kind of the jagged edges. You know what I mean? So it's all about layering, layering, layering. I think I didn't say this. Liquitex, gloss medium, and varnish. Okay. So just putting few of these down. I'm not going to do too much more on the paper, I don't think. Um, but while I'm doing this background here, I do want to say, um, if you've been feeling super duper duper stressed recently, like I have, or even if you haven't, but you want to just learn a new skill, I've kind of mentioned in a couple videos before about Skillshare, but I have been having a lot of fun recently taking some Skillshare classes. It's been so relaxing and I've been learning some new skills. So Skillshare is a great place that you can learn mixed media. Um, you can learn watercolor. You can learn all kinds of stuff. Um, two of my favorite mixed media classes I've actually taken recently uh, were... Mixed Media Primer, Learn to Paint Faster, Fix Problems, and Have Fun Making Art by Kendall Hilligus, I think is how you say her name. 
That one was really cool because it teaches you just the basics of mixed media. It's great if you've never done mixed media because um, she goes into all the materials and kind of just getting started. It doesn't really have projects so much as just like what is mixed media and what can you use for mixed media and stuff like that. Um, and then another one I took was um, Introduction to Mixed Media, Creating mis Mixed Media Postcards by Nina Vangro, I think is how I said, which her style is totally like mine. So like the painting I'm gonna do today is really like that style. So if you've been interested in taking, in learning about mixed media, that is a really, really, really great source. Um, I've also been taking one called Creative Breakthrough, Eight Exercises to Power Your Creativity. Um, that's by Danielle Kreisa, which that's been super insightful. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add some of this gesso and modeling paste in a few areas, but I'm gonna keep telling you about Skillshare as I do it. And I think I'm gonna use some of the palette knife just to give it some different textures. All right, anyways. So yeah, I've been taking this, um, you know, the Creative Breakthrough class, which has been so helpful and really kind of given me some clarity and peace of mind in my direction as an artist. So I cannot recommend it highly enough. I've been having a lot of fun with these different workshops and classes that they have on there. Um, so, also, Skillshare is super affordable. The yearly subscription is less than $10 a month, you guys. And uh, the first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get two month free trial of the premium membership so that you can explore your creativity. So definitely check that out if it's something you think you would be interested in, whether you wanna learn about mixed media or whatever else. And of course, the link Links to all the products, so all these little birdie products that I'm using, will be in the description as well. Okay, this background is coming along really nice. All right, I think at this stage, so we need to let this dry kind of before really going on to much more. But I think I will go ahead and try out some of these sprays, which you can do while this stuff is still wet. I'm kind of addicted to sprays. <laughs> I have so many of them. Most of them are um, the Dilutions Ranger sprays, but I have a lot of different brands. Um, also art anthology sprays. So this is exciting. I'm not actually sure. Um, it doesn't say if it's like alcohol ink or what. I don't think it is. So it's just an ink spray basically. This is the, ooh. Lime Splash, that was way brighter than I anticipated. I can tone that down just a little here. And if you, you know, you overdo it, don't even stress. You can come back with some more of the gesso or whatever later. Okay, this is Gold Rush. Let me go, see if we can go over here a bit. Okay, that one's not as crazy. I like using the green with browns is it kind of that antique look and then I'm going to try a little bit of the ocean mist just to get a hint of the blue in there I'm going to really try not to overdo it with this okay <laughs> all right all right just gonna pat this a little bit here and those spray real nice okay Let's take a break. Let's let this dry and then we will be right back. Okay guys, I let this dry for actually like a couple hours and um, I still wanna tone this down just a little bit in a couple spots. Uh, I think maybe a little too much ink there. I got a little excited. So I'm going in with just some of the uh, gesso. And this is also Little Birdie. And I'm just going to use this to just tone it down a little bit in a few spots. Which I have to try to not overdo this as well. I'm really happy with this color right here. 
So you can kind of get the idea that mixed media is often layering, layering, layering. So much layering. Okay. Don't think too much is needed, but that's pretty good. All right, now let's try out some of this fun stuff. So this is that tinted metallic Caribbean teal paint, which looks so pretty. I don't know if you can see how it's like shiny, shimmery, right? So let's get in here, just regular paintbrush. Um, I kind of tend to start on the edges and kind of work in, especially since I'm going to be adding some things in here. So I don't want to put some things where I know I'm, they're just going to be covered up. So I'll just go a little bit on the edge of some spots. Kind of framing a little bit, I guess. Alright. I like that. I'm really liking how this is coming along. Okay. Okay, good. So now... Now that we have pretty good background, we're going to start to add on top of that. First thing I'm going to do here is just, I'm going to cut off the excess. You absolutely don't have to. You can have things hanging over, and I often do like to do that. But in this painting, I'm going to just go ahead and cut it off. Okay. There we go. All right, now what I have that's gonna go on top is first I have some stamps. So this one makes a really good background stamp. Obviously I've got wet paint and gesso on there so I can't use that just yet. I have another stamp here that is going to be um, uh, saying on here. I haven't quite decided how I'm gonna add it, but it says her head was always in the clouds because she was learning to fly. And then I have this awesome girl who is from um, Tim Holtz found relatives and these are kind of like playing cards and I just ripped around the edges I love the ripped paper look and then I also have uh, this wooden bird with a wooden branch I'm not sure if I'm gonna include all of this or not I really want to include the girl definitely but I kind of so what I'll do when I'm doing mixed media is I'll kind of go and maybe start placing things on without actually like attaching them. And then I was thinking I would put some of the string coming down. And this stamp maybe up, maybe like right there, I think. I'm kind of digging that. All right, all right, all right. So I'm going to just hit this with my heat gun real quick and be right back so that I can use this background stamp. All right, now I do have a massive black pad somewhere, but unfortunately I have no idea where it is. So I'm going to use some of this Distress ink just to color this pad here. Hopefully I'm able to get enough ink. This is just for the background again, so... It's okay if we can't like read it or anything. All right, that didn't show up hardly at all. Okay, yeah, I can see that a little bit. Let me try one more time over here on the left. I really need to find that ink pad. <laughs> yeah. Cool, okay. So it is just very faint, but that is totally okay. All right, let's go ahead and start adding in our main objects here. So once again, I'm gonna kind of just place things just to see. I kind of, I don't mind overlap, absolutely. And I think I like 
the idea of this bird hanging off the side a little bit here. All right, that paint is still a little wet, it looks like. Okay, so on these, I'm gonna quickly spritz this with this color splash. Okay, and then the bird, I'm gonna go with, um, I think I'll do all the colors. So, green, gold, blue, so he'll be definitely darker. Okay, soaked up some of that ink real quick. And I did dry those guys with my heat gun. So I'll start by putting this down using some more of that Liquitex. Okay, and I'm going to also go ahead and put the Liquitex over it. And you gotta be careful when you do this because of the ink that's on here. We don't want that to get on the top. So just be careful. And I always do that to kind of fully seal in any paper that I use. Although I will also be using a spray varnish when all is said and done. But this definitely helps protect it for now. All right, there's our girl. Um, I wanna do another thing here, which is I'm going to take just like some, this is some of the extra pieces from that card, and I'm going to cover her face and most of her, and I'm gonna actually just splatter some paint. This is some white acrylic paint that's watered down. There we go. All right, all right. So as you can see, in mixed media, it, it evolves. It's never quite the way you started. Okay, so I'm gonna put this here. There's our branch. And then here's our bird. These wood pieces, I cannot remember where I got them. My first inclination is to say Michael's, but could be wrong. Okay. Yay. All right, so we've got kind of our main pieces down. So now I want to figure out where to put this stamp. I need a light enough place that it will show up though. So I think I'm going to kind of create a section over here with gesso, just so I kind of have a white spot to stamp on. And I want it to go kind of over here. I'm going to feather out the edge of the bit. All right, once again, we shall let that dry so that we can stamp it. We'll be back. Okay, that should be dry enough. Once again, don't have my black ink pad, so I'm gonna do my best with this. Now this is kind of an important one. It needs to be able to be red, which it should work here. Okay. Make sure I put it on correctly. Good news is if for some reason it doesn't work, we can always just paint right over it and do it again. Okay. So there it is. 
her head was always in the clouds because she was learning to fly. It's not as dark as I would like it, but I'm okay with that. It's definitely legible. All right, so we have a few more things that I want to try out from them. Nope, not that one. That's the metallic. Uh, one of them being this sparkle paint, which just looks super exciting. So once again, I'll use that to just kind of accent, I think, a few points. And I'm going to leave it nice and textured. Maybe even go a little over the picture here. I always like adding a little sparkle. Okay. And that's good. Now I also have this pearl drops. So here I'm going to use this as a dimensional paint. I'll just go ahead and go all the way across. Why not? That is awesome. I love that. Okay. And maybe we'll do just kind of some drips there. Very cool. Okay. I was going to use whoop, some of this twine, but I actually don't think it's needed. So I'm going to put that aside. That is... See, perfect example of how I changed my mind. And there's one more thing that I want to do, which is I'm going to just take some um, chalk. And usually I do this actually with ink, but I want to kind of darken the edges a bit. Maybe not all of them. And of course, I have to avoid any wet paint spots. But I'm going to kind of give it a bit of a vignette, I think is how you say that. You guys have no idea the anxiety I have about saying words correctly on videos. Sometimes I think I say them all incorrectly. Uh, I'm gonna, don't know why I'm holding that. Okay. So I kind of remember where the wet paint spots are. So I'm avoiding those. And this is just a pastel charcoal. Honestly, I don't have a clue where it's from. I've had it for many, many years. I had a friend who's an artist that passed away a few years ago and she gave me her whole stash beforehand. So this is from that. I always love using the supplies she gave me. Makes me feel still connected. Well, that was a really personal story. Okay. That is done. I'm going to sign it. And then we'll be done. So I just realized that this was blurry. Hopefully it wasn't blurry for that long. I'm very sorry. Sometimes I hold up things for you guys to look at and then it focuses on that and it doesn't refocus. Which is really annoying. Okay. So we'll do a close up here. And of course once everything is totally dry I do go outside and I just will spray it with um, a nice coat of varnish. Okay, so lots and lots of depth, lots of layers. I really love this piece and I'm so happy to be doing a mixed media piece. It has been too long love these little birdie products so i'll list everything in the description make sure you check that out check them out and of course check out skillshare having a lot of fun learning from them so thank you guys so much for watching i'll see you all next time